Hi, everybody. This is David Sarita, February 21st, um, 2022. And this week on my Gnostic Gospels series, um, first, I put a link up to people for a free link to watch my film, Mona Lisa's Little Secret, which goes into decoding da Vinci's uh, Mona Lisa painting. And um, you can see this incredible encryption you know, that, that, that da Vinci used. First, the ratio of the painting height by, you know, breadth is is 1 to 1.452, and da Vinci was born in 1452. So I, I seem to be the first person to have noticed that, and I put that in the film. But then you see the, the actual letters, Mona Lisa. I mean, Mona suggests the, the monad or the singularity of God and and also the, the marriage of, of the masculine and the feminine. So you can see I put a free link. If you look in the chat, you can watch Mona Lisa's Little Secret on Gaia TV free. And also we're going to be talking about The Lost Leonardo, which is the new Sony Classics film on the Salvatore Mundi, the savior of the world, or Da Vinci's portrait of Jesus Christ, Isa Masia. So <clears throat> those links are there, though you'll have to scroll up in the chat because they're going to disappear um, with everyone. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I think we're up to over 700 views last week on the last lecture, so that's good on my YouTube channel. And um, so last week we were in, and I'm just going to go back to it, the Gospel of the Egyptians, otherwise known as the Holy Book of the Great Invisible Spirit. And again, it's not in Egyptian as in an old Egyptian um, religion manuscript. It's a Christian manuscript by e Egyptian Christians. And in the very end, it literally says, and the great invisible eternal spirit and his only begotten son. So Jesus is the only begotten son. We know that. And the eternal light and his great incorruptible consort which means his wife, because the word consort is his wife. And, and it says, and the incorruptible Sophia, and the barbellion. And the, Sophia means wisdom in Greek, but she's actually a divine personality. So this means that Jesus' consort is not Sophia, and the barbellion is really the divine feminine, you know, the, the, the preeminent pre you know non non um eternal it, it, not a being who came into being a being who always was the barbellion is the is the really the divine feminine but the 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 work ends with jesus and his consort now what's amazing about that is the the gospel of philip which we've already covered earlier in the series it says that Jesus was always with his companion, Mary Magdalene, and used to often kiss her on her. And the word is actually scratched off. So we assume it means the mouth. And the, you know, it calls her his consort and companion both in the Gospel of Philip. So we come to this realization that Jesus is 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 not a singular male ruling incarnation of god he's actually in paredness with the the masterful um consort his his incorruptible consort and of course mary magdalene was deemed by the early roman fathers of the church and the early councils to be a prostitute but that was all planned to destroy their marriage so that the the continuation of the Roman Empire being an all male empire would persist, and the and the subjects of the empire would see the all male rulership just in the same way they saw the Roman Senate and the way they saw Caesar. They were embodiments of the gods, and they weren't going to have it any other way. and And we have evidence, of course, in the in the secret Gospel of John. John, Jesus appears in the trimorphic vision as the father, the mother, and the son. And we see in the trimorphic protonoia that the image of God is father, mother, and son. 
and we see in the Gospel of the Egyptians the same thing. So we have absolute iconic perpetuity of the trimorphic vision of God being masculine and feminine and the child, the son. So for the human race, God is represented by a holy family. And that would mean Jesus's consort would be absolutely supreme. And, and to put her in the category that she was put into as a prostitute who was reformed is not correct because today's university scholars know very well, I've read so many detailed analysis of this, that they know Mary Magdalene in the Gospels, that it was her family that funded the transportation of the Jesus movement across the landscape, meaning the traveling of the apostles and the spreading of the teachings. And it was her family that actually funded it. So you can't imagine somebody being from a, a wealthy family like that and then all of a sudden becoming a reformed prostitute. That would be something of a family who is, you know, in in debt into, into poverty, who would do something like that. So what, again, I've done, the first thing is, and I'll give you kind of a prelude to Mona Lisa's little secret. Before today, we're going to go into the Lost Leonardo, the, the Salvatore Mundi painting. And I have the, all the scans you're going to see today, the high-res scans when they first found the painting and they, somebody bought it for eleven dollars or $1,200, which is in the film. There's a link to the Sony classic film there. I mean, it's a must-see film. And what's tragic about the film is not once does anybody ever say the word Jesus Christ. They, 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 they just call the painting the, the Salvatore Mundi, which means the savior of the world. And it's really, it's a really a crying shame because this, this painting is da Vinci's portrait of Jesus. And it's the way probably he saw him in an actual vision because to my astonishment, he looks exactly the same as what I saw when he appeared physically right in front of me. So Jesus appeared in his physical form to show me what he looked like. And it's exactly like Salvatore Mundi, except I would say his real neck was thicker. He was, he was a powerful man. And from the measurements on the skeleton in the Shroud of Turin, Jesus' height is exactly the same as my height, which is 72.05 inches, which is which is just a smidgen above six feet. And, and that's not a huge man because there, there were men like, for example, King Kazimui, Kazakamui in Egypt was eight feet tall. I mean, bigger than Shaquille O'Neal, actually. And so there were some very big men in the Middle East. So G, being six feet tall would not be a huge man. But Jesus was... When I saw him, the face, the copper colored hair, like the reddish brown hair, which you're going to see in the painting is exactly what I saw. But in his resurrected form, notice that Mary Magdalene is the first witness to the resurrection. And the question is, why would he appear to her first? Because he and her are impairedness um, in, in the likeness of... Um, of um i'm trying to think of i have it bookmarked here matthew if you look in um uh matthew chapter 19 is where jesus confirms moses in genesis that when a man and a woman are married the two will become one flesh and that nothing can tear them apart because god has brought this this couple together and, yeah and so he's 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 setting the standard for 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 men and women to be married and also to have children, right? So Jesus for Leonardo is not just a fantasy. He clearly has had an actual vision and of Christ. And, and what's amazing about the painting, and you're about to go into it, is that it has a paredness to Mona Lisa. And so Mona Lisa is, is actually using a Fibonacci sequence, because Fibonacci's numbers are 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 3, 5, 8. Between the third and the fifth letter, you have an apostrophe. M, 1, 2, 3. Mona has four, and the, the fifth letter is the L, and then the, there's three letters after that, so that's five and three. 
and then there's an apostrophe. And all you have to do is put an apostrophe at the top of the L, and the title is is broken its code, which is Mona the Isa. See, in French, you can't say la Isa because you can't have two vowels facing each other. So you break the vowel and you add an apostrophe. So Mona the Isa. Now, if you look up and you can Google this, you know, how Jesus' name is spelled all over the world. And many countries in the world today, they spell his name I-S-A, Isa. And in fact, that's the way it's 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 phonetic sound is in in Arabic, but in many countries in the world today there is no J, and that's because the J is Latin, and there is no J in the Aramaic language that Jesus spoke. So Mona the Isa is Mona the Jesus, and it when we were making the film, actually, my wife Crystal and I, who was alive at the time and has passed since last summer um we found we found the answer because the way i got the decoding of the mona lisa painting is in the middle of the night in our home in sedona arizona at the foot of our bed in the middle of the night it was it was actually early evening this woman who was really mary magdalene appeared at the foot of my bed wearing a blue this color ephod what's known as the blue ephod which is the holy robe that the prophets wear going into the temple. So that th th this was a deep sapphire color robe. And and Mary Magdalene was at the foot of my bed, and she was she, her face was veiled. And it felt like a giant vacuum cleaner where she was trying to pull me out of body, and I was grabbing onto the sheets like I was going to be sucked through a black hole or something. And then she just showed me this simple way to decode the Mona Lisa painting and and showing me that it was it was the trimorphic vision of God, the masculine and the feminine, all in one. And so, when you take the letters uh, Mona the Isa, Mona the Jesus, finally we found an X-ray of the painting, and it was actually done by the the Canadian government. They had the painting and they X-rayed right underneath Mona Lisa is a charcoal sketch clearly of Jesus. Nobody seemed to notice what their ideas was. Oh, Leonardo must have painted the Mona Lisa on an on top of an old drawing, and it's clearly a bearded man. It, it's clearly a young Jesus. There's just no. You can see the blood coming off of the forehead in in the charcoal sketch. And again, that's all in the film Mona Lisa's Little Secret at Guy TV, and I generated a free link for people to watch that. So now knowing that the Mona Lisa is actually the, the trimorphic vision. It, it's the father, the son, and the mother all in the same image or or the wife of, of Jesus. It literally together like this in the painting and that the mind, you see, ultraviolet light will penetrate the surface paint and register in your retina and your brain is actually seeing the, the masculine and feminine dichotomy in the painting. And that's why when people look at it, they're like, they can't tell if it's a male or female. Is it androgynous? And, and in a way, it is. Now, when you come to the Salvatore Mundi, what I discovered is the same thing. Except this time, see, in Mona Lisa, it's Mary Magdalene on the surface, his consort, his wife. And Jesus is underneath. And then in the Salvatore Mundi, the masculine is on the surface and and the feminine is, is behind him. And you're going to see this so clearly. It's really amazing because when the painting gets restored, they destroy the evidence. And the restored version, which sold for $450 million to the crown Saudi prince, <coughs> actually is... Um, is not the the true painting okay so we're gonna go to share screen and then so when you go to share screen can you see this painting now Sharos? yeah we can see it okay 
So this is the painting that sold for twelve hundred dollars. This is what they they found in an art catalog, and this is actually the Salvatore Mundi that has been painted over <laughs> by a complete amateur in many portions. And you can't imagine this is a real Da Vinci painting. So it, it looks, you know, it, it, it's like an old painting, but it looks like a pretty crappy job. So we don't need to spend too much time looking at that because then what happens next is the slate is cleaned. And when the slate is cleaned, we see this. And this is before restoration. And in this, and this is the real Da Vinci work that has been completely damaged by probably transportation and by people historically did, who did not understand what this is. And the first thing is you're going to look at is the right hand, which appears on the left in front of you. And there are two thumbs. Oh, boy. Are you... I got the wrong share tool here. I got to... So You're I, good. I, no, but I, I, I did something to it. I have to zoom in on it. And, and when you zoom in, you have to... You have to go like that. And then you right. have to zoom in more and go like that to the thumb. Okay, so if you look at the thumb, there are two thumbs. And oh, my God. That's her thumb. I'm going to show you in a minute when we look at the hair that she snuggled up right behind him. Okay, so th and this is talked about in the film, the Sony Classics film, and they have some other theory for why there's two thumbs. But if you look closely at the two fingers, the, the symbol he's making, and this is argued in the film. I tried to do this with my fingers, and you can't. And that's because the finger behind, notice how long and slender the fingers are. I'm six feet tall, and I don't have long and slender fingers like that. That's the hand of a woman. The, the, the finger behind you, if you look really close, and, and, and this is going to be hard to do because the replays of these things are not very good quality, but I'm going to try to pull left here. And if you get right into, there, there's, there's damage right here. Right where I have my little X, there's a jagged edge. Something has been removed back here. And you can see all these scratch marks above the thumb. You see how it's scratched all the way out? Somebody has removed something in so here. So this isn't damage. It's actually strategically scratched. Is well, what especially above, above the thumb because I see a little jagged hook mark here, right here where my X is. Right. And that means somebody has removed another finger back there. And again, you can see really clear here the two thumbs. And what are you trying to say that the two fingers are the same size and that's not possible? One would be shorter. No, I'm saying that the or and this is brought up in the film. The way the hand is oriented, you right. you can't do that actually with a single hand. You can you you may think you can, but if you twist your hand around, it doesn't actually work. And Leonardo doesn't make mistakes. So at one point, they thought they didn't have a Leonardo because they saw the double thumb and the mistake. But watch what happens up here. Now, let's go. Now, this is amazing. It's right up here where I have my X. Yeah. You can see Jesus's copper hair here and the beautiful curls down here. Can you but zoom there, in? Can you zoom in a bit? Yeah, there's another person. You see, there's a double headline. You see, yeah, this yeah. is the, my X is the top of his hairline and yeah. there's dark black hair here. And you're going to see when we go to the X-ray because the, uh, sorry, the infrared scan of the painting, you're going to see the black curls are way over here. And you see all this where my X is, that's, yeah. that's a flowing hairline. And yeah. actually over here, you down, down lower here where my X is, you see the dark. Again, this is before restoration. These right. are dark hairline curls. 
there's a woman with black hair. Look right up here. You can see it. She is behind him and she has her hand wrapped around his. That's crazy. Right. And now what's going to be more devastating is we're going to go into the eyes. And they are not the same person. Now, when you go into the eyes, the eye on the left, which is the right, which is actually the left brain, which is feminine, is actually looking upwards. And you're going to see this in the restoration because the restoration is done by an absolute master. And it actually sits up higher on the head if you look at the inside of the eye that's pointing to, to the nose, it's higher up than the eye on the right. right. And the eye on the right is darker and much bigger. That's the masculine eye, which is, which is his left, which is controlled by the right brain. Because remember, your, your right brain controls the left side of your body. Sorry, just knocked a piece of metal over here. So, and look, look at the eyebrow on the left eye. And look how soft that eyebrow is compared to the eyebrow on the right. This is done intentionally, absolutely intentionally, because, because it's, it's, it's the trimorphic vision, right? It's the father, the son, and the mother. The father, the mother, and the son. So this is these gospels that I've been teaching you, showing with you, sharing with you, were proliferating the the roman empire at the time da vinci was alive he would have had access to to copy and especially the gospel of philip where jesus is kissing mary magdalene so again what you've got to look for on this is is the eye on the left is sitting up higher on the head than the eye on the right they're not even and and that's not how a human face is look how small that eye is look at look at the 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 pupil is looking up and the other one is looking straight. I don't know a single human being that can do that. Where you can have one eye looking up and the other eye looking down, you have to be highly dyslexic with your eyes to be able to do something like that. <laughs> because because the eye on the right is looking right at you and the other one the pupil is looking right up. And and just wait till we get to the restoration. So now taking that out, let's go to our infrared There you go. This is the infrared. Now, the infrared has got some more details that are really incredible. So, although I can see that the quality of the size of my file isn't that great. But when we go to the thumb, you're going to see a cloudy, murky region here. Yeah. where you can see because so here's your second thumb with my little um x marker here is where there's damage to what was probably another finger in this foggy region where something was removed and again here are you see right over here right next to the hand mm -hmm. these hair curls and then when you come all the way up you can see her behind him so clearly at the top now. You see how light his hairline is here? Yeah. And how dark hers is behind him? Yeah. So clear. Now, what's tragic, you'll see this in the film, is they the, the restoring artist actually covers up the second person's hair behind him. Now you'll see in the infrared, way over here, we see our curls. Right over here are curls. Way over here. Here's the curl. There's curls in here. And there's actually curls way out here. So this hairline actually comes all the way over here. And then it flows over to the right. This is all hairline. Because there's a distinction between this space over here and this second person's hair, which is clearly clearly her so once you see mona lisa's little secret you'll see the paredness of 
that it's actually Mary Magdalene on the surface. And in this painting, the masculine is on the surface. And even this little um, jet, this little triangle wedge here is a perfect 70 degree angle, which I, I checked with my protractor. And, and 70 degrees is the slope angle of the Washington Monument Pyramidian, by the way. So it, it's it's really amazing. I mean, I, I've checked my angles on everything in here. Now, here is the most shocking thing of all, the other hand. This is really going to be hard to understand for most people. And you're going to have to, you're going to see there are one, there are actually three bright spots in the ball and there's moisture droplets. So this is a wet ball. Actually, there's all kinds of moisture droplets here. And you're, I'm going to go to my color, clean slate. This is my clean slate in color. So I'm not in infrared anymore. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom in on the ball. You're going to see what's going on down there. You see all the moisture? Mm -hmm. Plus 1702622817. Okay, hang on a second. I just gotta... So all the moisture on the ball and the three dots, that is a moist round ball intentionally to illustrate the female egg. And the three sperm are the three children they had. That's what he's holding in his hand. It's not a crystal ball. Because the moisture droplets are so clear here. They're so clear. There's so much moisture droplet work in the paint. You see all these little water droplets here? This is a moist ball. This is the symbol of the human fertility process. And again, you can see his hair has the copper color. And again, you can, when you go into the eyes. So now let's go to restored. And it, it's, it's kind of sad in a way to see the, the restored. Because when you get to this, or the restored version. You're going to see everything is removed. Everything is removed. And you can actually go on Wikipedia when you search Salvatore Mundi and you're going to see that, that say, look, look at the thumb. They've totally removed the second thumb. You see this? Yeah. Right. And the damage I showed you in this region in here, there yeah, was a little hook. They covered they were, it up. They've covered it up. This is restored. Now, if you look at the hair, you will not see see the you can't see another hairline at all. You can't see another hairline. And and the other hairline goes right up here where I have my X. Right. Right. The only thing, and this is quite dark, is the eyes. It's really obvious they're lopsided because this eye is sitting up higher than this eye. Right. Yeah. And but but she's clearly done some things here. Um, but to restore the eyes and taken away, you know, some of the, like, again, you, you yeah, she's made it symmetrical and all that. Well, it's not exactly symmetrical. This eye, look, look at this eyebrow, look at this yeah. eyebrow up here compared to how thick this eye, this eyebrow is much thicker. This is much thinner, which is a really yeah. feminine eyebrow, right? This eye is smaller. This eye is much bigger. I've actually measured them so I can. I can go right now and measure the inside of that eye to there. And th so this eye is six. The, the eye on the left is six centimeters and the eye on the right is eight. That's actually a huge difference. Right. And, and, and this, what I'm looking at is probably a little bigger than scale, but it shows proportionally they're totally out of whack because my eyes are the same. So why is this eye barely six centimeters and this eye is clearly eight? So so they're just, again, Da Vinci doesn't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. They're not, at least the eyes 
the evidence of the eyes. And it is kind of trippy to look at those eyes because the, they're a little lopsided and it gives you an interesting sensation. And she she did keep the moisture on the ball and she kept the, just got to grab this. You see the moisture on the ball. You see the moisture on the ball here. Yeah, and the three children. And the three children. I mean, I even measured the proportions of the triangle to see if there was meaning in, in the triangle. I even compared it to possible a, a you know tri-star constellation. But when I saw the moisture on the ball, he's clearly demonstrating this is a wet live ball. Right. So hence the the human egg being fertilized and the three children are duly noted in the um the newfound manuscript um which is based there, there's a book called the lost gospel that goes into the marriage of of jesus and mary magdalene and it's really really incredible so so that's i mean i know I know that there's probably people thinking all sorts of things, but I, what I've given you so far is a clear history of the Gnostic Gospels that, that confirm, not just in one, but in all of them, the trimorphic vision of God being masculine and feminine. And, and in fact, there's more and more and more support for that in each piece of work that we would explore and you know for example in in the gospel of the hebrews which is not the book of hebrews but is actually a a gospel written by early jewish christians to which there were hundreds of thousands of it wasn't as tiny as the hollywood movies make it think like he only had a few jewish followers he actually had hundreds of thousands and the Gospel of the Hebrews was written by early Jews, Jewish Christians, and it confirms that Jesus called the Holy Spirit the Mother or the Divine Feminine. So we can we can really see what's happened here. It, it's incredible. And the fact that this painting, I mean, one of the arguments in the film, okay, what happens, this is really amazing, is in the end, the Saudi crown prince is the secret you know, the admirer, the person who buys the painting for the record price of $450 million. And he offers to bring it to the Louvre in Paris. And all these tourists are going there, they're getting their hotels, and they want to see the Salvatore Mundi, the savior of the world, Jesus Christ. And they come to the Louvre, and it's and, and it turns out the Saudi crown prince wanted it paired opposite Mona Lisa in the Louvre. And the French... Museum curators denied him that opportunity because they said it, it, it's a restored painting, therefore it's not a da Vinci, and it can't be across the Mona Lisa. But they're so blind because they don't know what they're looking at, that Mona Lisa is the, is the feminine masculine, and this is the masculine feminine of the same message of the trimorphic vision of God. And further, and this wasn't easy to do because, again, you can't just go to Wikipedia to get the measurements of this painting. I had to get this accurate to, to more than two decimals. The height by the width of the painting is a ratio of 1 to 1.44. Hence, the 144,000 saints in the end of the of the book of revelation they get the seal of god on their forehead and the the common christian receives the new paradise earth as their form of heaven but the the 144,000 the ratio is 1 to 1.44 right and remember mona lisa is a ratio to 1 to 4 to 1452 1.452 which is da vinci's birth year so there's another message in the painting, and this is really difficult. You know, it's the, it's the year the painting was finished, and only in the movie, it, the painting is dated 
fifteen ten. Okay, but it's actually if you go to the month of the painting. Um, hang on a second. If I go to fifteen ten point one thirty two which will give me the the month that the painting was was finished in um, in the year of 1510 and I divide that by pi you're not going to believe what happens so the year of the painting what happens divided by pi is the exact finished height of the great pyramid of Egypt exact and and again jesus refers to himself okay th this this is going to get really incredible mathematics what made you divide it by pi well i can't tell you that i get i get guidance <laughs> 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 but i did so just take um 1452.132 divided by pi and it's 480.69 feet and even if you just do 14 um, 1510, the year of the painting divided by pi, you, you get the height of the Great Pyramid of Egypt to 99.98% accuracy. So what's amazing is, is St. Peter's Basilica today, people, today, the top of the dome designed by Michelangelo and many other great, great um, artists and engineers worked on, 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 on um, St. Peter's, the dome, the top of St. Peter's, is the same height as the Great Pyramid of Egypt is today. Today. And the ratio of St. Peter's is 1 to 1.618. The golden ratio. And the golden ratio is coded everywhere. So now we're going to go to share screen. I'm going to share screen. You're going to see my calculator. Okay. Can you see my calculator? Yeah. So the height of the Great Pyramid of Egypt, 480.69 feet times pi is the completion year of the painting. 1510.132 would put us in, you know, uh, February probably. Um, so then you go to in front of St. Peter's is an Egyptian obelisk whose height is tuned to the A note 444. And I'm not going to go into all the math on how that works because I'm going to lose a lot of you, but it's true. And, and John Lennon tuned his guitar, his A note, to A444. So why is this? And, and why is the ratio of the height and breadth of St. Peter's 1 to 1.618. So watch my calculator. So we're going to use the most accurate royal cubit. And Noah's Ark was 300 cubits times 20.601 inches per royal cubit. And the book of Ezekiel confirms a cubit of God is a cubit plus a hand. Now those are the inches of Noah's Ark. That's golden number. 1 to 1.61803 is the golden number to absolute precision. I mean absolute precision. Now, let's take the height of Solomon's temple, 30 cubits, times 20.601. We've got the golden number again, 1.61803. That's the golden number. So why is it? That if I go to stop share, we're going to go to, hang on a second here, I got to go to Google. Matthew 16, 18. And I'm just going to go to the... 
New King James, one of the oldest versions. Now, notice that 1618 is the golden ratio. It's 1 to 1.618. Now, I just showed you that Solomon's temple height and Noah's ark length using the correct uh, royal cubit is exactly the golden number. But what you don't see is Matthew 16, 18 is all about the building of the church, which means to build the church in proportion to the golden ratio, which the Great Pyramid of Egypt is built in. And Jesus referred to himself as the missing cornerstone that the builders rejected, which actually goes back into the Old Testament, into the books of the prophets. And I say to you, are Peter, and actually Peter's name in Greek is Petra, by the way, which means rock. So Peter's name means rock. Yeah. And you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. But it has to be built in, in golden ratio proportion, doesn't it? Because, because it's coded right there, Matthew 1, 6, 1, 8. It, it's, it's all coded. So it's been sitting there in front of us for over a thousand years and and nobody's noticed and yet and yet michelangelo who built who was one of the the earliest i think he's the earliest architect on saint peter's is i mean it's really close it's one to 1.61 saint peter's and again it's hard to get the best measurements online you can't just go to Wikipedia and think you know you've got anything accurate because they tend to round numbers off, which is really bad. Like they'll say the Great Pyramid of Egypt is is 481 feet because they don't want to say 480.69. They just round things off, which is which is really, really amazing. But just look at this. Like just look at. I mean, the evidence is right there. You look at. Matthew 16, 18. That's that's golden number right there. Right there. Now, if I go to Genesis 3, 14, we see Oh, no, that's No, this is the wrong one. It's um I gotta find this. I know where it is. It's in my paper over here. Here just a second. Stop sharing. I have to go. I think I have the wrong chapter. Let's go to here. Sorry, it's Exodus 314. In Exodus 314, we see the introduction of the ancient Hebrew name of God. The YWHW, the Tetragrammaton, means I am that I am, or I am that which came into being. And notice 314, of course, is pi. <clears throat> so you you see, you have to understand the way da Vinci's mind is working. You have to understand that his the ordinance he's getting from, from Christ to paint his portrait and complete it on the very year divided by pi would give us the height of the great pyramid of egypt it is utterly phenomenal because the dimensions of i have to find this if i if i can find this it'll be a miracle which is which is a, a de artist depiction of of um <clears throat> moses's temple the first temple which was the um the holy place and the holy of holies when it was a tabernacle and a tent the the holy of holies was 10 by 10 cubits and the holy place was 10 by 20 now the queen's chamber in the great pyramid is 10 by 10 on the floor and the king's chamber is 10 by 20 so that they have the exact same measurements as the tabernacle holy of holies which is where the ark of the covenant was stored and the staffs were were calibrated in in the ark. Um, you can see the same measurements, which 
is probably why when Jesus referred to himself as the missing as the missing cornerstone, he's referring to the missing stone on the top of the Great Pyramid of Egypt. One, because he was raised in Egypt as a child, and, and two, because he knows the truth that that is not an Egyptian monument, it, which is why when the pyramid was opened up, they didn't find any Egyptian hieroglyphs inside of it at all completely void of all writing of all images of all graven images um but i don't think i'm going to be able to find this artist depiction but i wish i could find it to show you just to show you can see this that the 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 reference by dividing the completion year of the painting to pi to the height of the great pyramid in saint peter's basilica St. Peter's Basilica is not the height of the finished pyramid. It's the height of the pyramid today. And that's probably because at the time of Michelangelo, they didn't see evidence of a capstone, which Jesus called the missing corner, which he calls the chief stone, right? So you go to... Hang on a second here. If I go to my website, if I go to, here, I'll show you where this is. So to go to share, share screen again. If you go to my website, which is davidsarita.co and you go to frequency, sorry, you go to frequency Washington monument project. And the Washington Monument is, if I take, <clears throat> this is really amazing about the Washington Monument, for those of you who don't know, but if I take the Washington Monument <clears throat> and I take the height of the monument and I draw two circles whose diameter is the height of the monument, the, the height of the Vesca Pisces that forms in the middle is the height of the Great Pyramid of Egypt finished perfectly. Now, if you look over here on the left, you'll see on the White House, I mean, on the Washington Monument lawn, you'll see it sitting in the middle of a Vesca Pisces formation on the lawn. Now, if I come up here to my figure one, the book of Acts 4, 10 through 12, actually. So we go to Acts 4, 10 through 12. You really have to see this. So I'll go here, uh, 4, 10 through 12, and I'll go to Bible Gateway. And I, I don't like reading the New International Version, so I'll read New King James. Let it be known to you all, to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. So he's saying he is the rejected cornerstone, which we can say is, is the top of the Great Pyramid. Having grown up in Egypt, you would say what happened to the, the top, you know, the, the, the cornerstone that's rejected. Now, when you're building a temple, such as Solomon's Temple, <clears throat> Um, which was standing at the time of Christ because the Romans destroyed, started, I think they, they, they destroyed it. Um, they destroyed it after he was crucified. They burned it to the ground. But there was no missing stone in Solomon's temple. The only missing cornerstone is the missing top of the Great Pyramid of Egypt. So again, if you come here also, You'll see if you take the height of the Great Pyramid of Egypt, 480.69 feet divided by pi. Remember, times pi, we get to the completion year of Salvatore Mundi, 1510. But divided by pi, we get to 153, which is the number of fish the apostles caught on the resurrection of Christ. And actually, 153 is the ancient Hebrew gematria 
for Mary Magdalene's name. So there you go. Wow. There it is again. There it is again. Right. So when the Washington Monument is built, you see, it is an actual monopole antenna transmitter powered by the Tesla Schumann resonance. And it's giving off a series of frequencies. And I calculated the frequencies of the monument. And the monument gives off a frequency, um, an octave of the 432A music scale. The 432A music scale. And as soon as the monument is erected, when it's being completed, Edison invents the light bulb, um, the phonographic record, Tesla invents alternating current, and Edison invents direct current and radio and and all the greatest scientific inventions in the history of the world are all being born with a certain radius of the Washington Monument. It's all happening. You can see this on my website at davidsreeco forward slash Washington. So that's where this all, where it all goes, is, is you're seeing Da Vinci's masterful... Um, clandestine this the greatest secret in the history of the world is that he knew in his time that the romans had conquered the true christian religion and they had taken away the trimorphic vision of god being masculine and feminine and the child the son and they buried it so he put it in and what are the odds that the most valuable paintings in the history of the world are the Mona Lisa and the Salvatore Mundi. And, and that the French would reject the savior of the world to sit across the Mona Lisa. That is, if they knew what they had done, why did how the... Can, how can they not know what they did? Because they, they buried all the evidence. They were only trying to restore the painting and make as much money as they could. And if you watch the movie, you're going to see this. That's all they care about is the money. It's all they care about. So sad. So why is it that the Saudi, the, the crown Saudi prince, I mean, you should see in the end of the movie where the Salvatore Mundi is now. I mean, why didn't the U.S. government freaking buy the painting and put it in in, in a museum in Washington, you know how much money and tourism the painting would make? You think you wouldn't get your $450 million back? Now it's in the middle of the Saudi desert in this in beautiful building lined with mirrors. The whole thing has got mirrors on the outside. But I think he knows. I think he's intelligent enough to know, which is why he wanted it to be displayed opposite the Mona Lisa. He knows what he's looking at. He knows what I'm telling you here today. He's probably laughing at us for not knowing. He's laughing at us for not knowing because he's seen all the scans before and after the restoration. He knows. I guarantee you he knows because that's why he wanted it displayed across from the Mona Lisa. And the French. Now, I mean, you know how you say I am in French, anybody? Je suis. Je suis. Yeah. Now, drop the I. Jesus. <laughs> and what is the true name of Jesus and the gospel of Philip? The same as the Father, which means I am. Their language is coded with one of the greatest secrets in the entire religion. I am is the name of God. Just sweet Jesus is, is the name of God. Now, now Mona the Isa, Mona La, you can't say La Isa. It's it's an apostrophe. That's all it is. And suddenly, you got to see the film. Remember, I, I gave everybody a link today. If you go to the top on the on the on the chat here, you'll see there's a link to watch Mona Lisa's little secret on Guy TV, and there's a link to the lost um, uh, lost Leonardo, which is Sony Classics. I actually bought it on. Google Play, you can get the film on Google Play. It's really worth watching. But to me, again, it's, it was very sad that nobody's acknowledging that this is Da Vinci's portrait of Jesus Christ. I mean, I just can't even believe it. I mean, they have a hard time even saying Savior of the World in the film. It's all about money. But maybe the painting is in the, its rightful hands because it's in the hands 
of somebody who actually knows what it is because the, the money changers didn't seem to care what the real message of the painting is. But, you know, that's, it's not as valuable as the Mona Lisa, but it, it's not, um, it's still probably, you know, one of the most valuable paintings in the history of the world. So what are the odds that da Vinci would make these two paintings with this encoded message of the trimorphic vision of God hidden in the paintings and nobody would notice. You don't notice because if you haven't read these scriptures, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know what to look for. You wouldn't know why underneath the Mona Lisa, when they x-rayed it, there's a charcoal sketch of Jesus Christ. You wouldn't know why there's a woman with black hair snuggled up behind Jesus with her hand wrapped around his hand together. <laughs> that we are together. The two are one. <laughs> That's the, the masculine and the feminine is the message. It's unbelievable. Anyway, so next week we're going to continue. I'm going to continue until we get through the, the large body of the Gnostic work. And it's this series is going to go on for quite a while. But once you understand the potency of Jesus having a wife and children, and that if you read um, Mark 6, 1 through 8, which again is golden ratio, 6, 1, 8, where Jesus refers to his family and even his sisters. This is in the canonized Gospels. My God, it's right there. It's right there. He had a big family. He had sisters too. We don't even know who they are. Because the Roman church was, was dictating the policy and the structure of this religion for all of Christianity. Because it's not like the Protestants and the Protestant movement took any notice to these scriptures when they were discovered. They just followed what the Romans said. And yet they claim to be different Christians than the Catholics. But they're they're following the same orders. That they when, when these these gospels were retrieved and, and translated at major universities in America, Claremont, Princeton, major major universities, and they were released to the world. All the all the Pope had to say was he called it heresy because if you read them and you get into them like we're doing. You're going to see this incredibly balanced male female trimorphic vision of God, which is which is so balanced. And if and if we had a church that was serving um God and 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 the teachings of Christ and Magdalene together, my God, we would have a completely different world. Our whole world would be different. You you wouldn't see children and minors being sexually abused in the churches at all. You would see something completely different. And I believe there's more. I believe we, we're, we've we only seen the tip of the iceberg. And there will be more scriptures that surface. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the film Mona Lisa's Little Secret and The Lost Leonardo. And we'll see you here next time. Thanks for, thanks for being here, everybody. Thanks, David. Well, that was awesome. Anyone else have any questions or have a good have a good week everyone. See you next week. You're all welcome. Hey Rosanna, how are you? Thank you everyone. Thanks, Patricia. Guys, are welcome. Thank you, everyone. Good, good night.